civic nationalism, also known as democratic or liberal nationalism, is about uniting people through shared values like freedom, equality and individual rights rather than culture or ethnicity. It's like being part of a team where everyone agrees to follow the same rules and principles no matter where they come from. In a civic nation, anyone can join as long as they respect and uphold these values. The idea is that people need a common national identity to help them live meaningful, independent lives. This type of nationalism focuses on political unity and citizenship. State nationalism or statism is about making the identity of the state the same as the identity of the nation. It's a type of civic nationalism that can lean towards strong, even harsh government control. In extreme cases like Italian fascism, it becomes more authoritarian or totalitarian where the state has a lot of power and control over people's lives. Ethnic nationalism defines a nation by shared ethnicity, meaning the people have a common heritage, language, faith, culture or ancestry. This form of nationalism focuses on promoting and affirming the identity of a specific ethnic group. Those who don't belong to this group may be seen as outsiders or even treated as second-class citizens. Ethnic nationalism prioritizes the interests and culture of one ethnic group above others. It looks at political issues by using its own culture or ethnicity to judge other cultures, practices and people. Neo-nationalism. This modern form emerged in response to the changes brought by globalization in the 1980s. It builds on classical nationalism but incorporates reactionary elements. Neo-nationalists often support right-wing populism, oppose globalization and advocate for protectionism, nativism and limits on immigration. They may also express Islamophobia or skepticism towards the European Union. Concerned about losing cultural identity Identity, neo-nationalists emphasize protecting traditional heritage, art and symbols. Expansionist nationalism is a radical form of nationalism that combines strong ethnic pride with aggressive expansionist goals. It promotes the idea that one's own nation is superior and has the right to take over or reclaim territories through military force. Unlike liberal nationalism, it embraces chauvinism and racial superiority, believing that some nations have more right to self-determination than others. Chauvinism is an extreme unreasonable belief in the superiority of one's own group or nation viewing others as inferior. It represents excessive patriotism and nationalism marked by an unwavering faith in one's own national greatness. According to legend, the term originates from the French soldier Nicolas Chauvin who, despite being wounded in the war and receiving a small pension, passionately maintained his support for Napoleon and the French Empire, even when his views were unpopular. His intense devotion to his cause, despite adversity, gave rise to the term chauvinism. Romantic nationalism or organic nationalism sees the state as a natural development of the nation's language, race, culture and traditions. It values these cultural elements as central to a nation's identity and legitimacy. This form of nationalism emerged as a response to top-down rule by monarchs or empires, promoting the idea that a nation's identity comes from its own people's shared heritage. It expressed the ideals of Romanticism and was against Enlightenment rationalism, but it also influenced art and political philosophy. Religious nationalism links national identity to a specific religious belief, dogma or ideology. It blends religion with politics. This can happen in two ways. Religion can unite people by creating a shared national bond, much like language or culture, and it can influence politics by inspiring laws and actions that reflect religious beliefs. Religious nationalism often arises in response to modernity or secular nationalism, especially in countries with recent borders or a history of colonialism. Revolutionary nationalism. This refers to groups of people who want to create or strengthen their own nation by overthrowing the existing order through revolution. These movements aim to achieve national goals by challenging and replacing the current system. Examples include certain groups in the French Revolution, the Indian Independence Movement or Vietnam's Khan Vuong movement against French rule. Liberation nationalism focuses on gaining independence from colonial or oppressive rule. It's about a nation or group fighting for freedom and self-determination, aiming to reclaim control over their land, culture and political destiny. This type of nationalism 
nationalism is often seen in anti-colonial movements and struggles for national liberation. Left-wing nationalism, also called socialist nationalism, merges left-wing politics or socialism with nationalism. It supports national independence or unity while advocating for social equality and workers' rights. Examples include Fidel Castro's 26th of July movement, which led the Cuban Revolution, and the African National Congress's fight against apartheid in South Africa. Pan-nationalism. This type is about creating a bigger group identity that includes people from different countries or regions who share the same ethnicity, culture or historical background. Instead of focusing on just one nation, pan-nationalism tries to bring together multiple nations or groups that have common traits. For example, Pan-Africanism is a movement that wants to unite all people of African descent worldwide, whether they live in Africa, the Americas or Europe, by focusing on their shared history and culture. Another example is Pan-Germanism, which aimed to unite all German-speaking and non-German Germanic-speaking people in a single nation-state, even if they lived in different countries. Economic nationalism. This approach prioritizes the nation's economic interests by having the government play a strong role in the economy. This includes using tariffs, trade restrictions and policies that favor domestic industries over foreign ones. The main idea is that the economy should help achieve national goals, like self-sufficiency and national security, rather than being driven by global free trade. Economic nationalists often oppose globalization and prefer protecting their country's industries from foreign competition. They see international trade as a competition where only one side truly benefits and they believe that building up the country's industry is essential for economic strength and military power. Mercantilism, which is a focus on accumulating wealth through trade surpluses, is a variant of economic nationalism. Plurinationalism or multi-ethnic nationalism is the idea that several distinct national groups can coexist within one political community or state. In a plurinational state, different nationalities are recognized as part of the same country, each with its own identity and rights. This concept helps prevent divisions within a society by acknowledging and preserving the diversity of its people. Plurinational democracy recognizes these different groups within a single political system, ensuring that all are represented. The term originated in Bolivia in the 1980s and both Bolivia and Ecuador are now constitutionally defined as plurinational states. Diaspora nationalism or long-distance nationalism refers to nationalist feelings among people living outside their homeland such as the Irish in the US, Lebanese in the Americas and Africa or Armenians in Europe and the US. This form of nationalism allows people to maintain a connection to their ancestral homeland and cultural identity without relocating. Unlike pan-nationalism, which seeks to unite various nations or ethnic groups into a larger political entity, diaspora nationalism focuses on preserving and celebrating national identity from afar. Integral nationalism, developed by Charles Mourat in the 19th century France, sought to unify and strengthen the French state by emphasizing national cohesion and the role of the monarchy. It prioritizes national interests and excludes those seen as unfrench, such as Protestants, Jews and Freemasons. Politically, it aims to balance local cultural respect with the central authority of the monarchy. This type of nationalism is counter-revolutionary, focusing on preserving traditional values and rejecting expansionist aims. Constitutional patriotism. This concept emphasizes loyalty to a nation's democratic constitution and its principles rather than to a specific national culture or ethnic identity. It assumes people are loyal to the rules and values of a diverse democratic society. This approach aims to create a shared group identity based on constitutional values, which can be more inclusive in diverse multicultural societies. It was influential in shaping the European Union, fostering a sense of unity among multiple countries through shared democratic principles rather than ethnic or cultural ties. Eco-nationalism merges nationalism with green politics. It holds that a nation and its citizens have a special responsibility to protect their environment. eco nationalism regardless of their political leanings, emphasize environmental care as a national duty. This form of nationalism connects environmental protection with national pride, often involving the state promoting environmental policies as symbols of national identity. It may also include efforts to preserve native species and landscapes as part of national heritage. Eco-nationalism even played a role in the disintegration of the Soviet Union. Mystical nationalism elevates the nation to a divine or sacred status, 
treating it as an ultimate truth. It might intersect with ethnic nationalism through pseudo-historical claims about the nation's origins. This form of nationalism is exemplified by Germanic mysticism under the Third Reich Nazi regime, which combined occult beliefs with nationalistic ideology. Territorial nationalism. In this form, all inhabitants of a particular territory are believed to share a common national identity, regardless of their ethnic, linguistic, religious or cultural differences. It can manifest at both the level of sovereign states and sub-sovereign regions. Within nation states, it emphasizes allegiance to the country of birth or adoption, idealizing citizenship, legal equality and the establishment of a shared public culture. However, territorial nationalism can also be associated with forced expulsion, ethnic cleansing and annexation when a nation seeks to create an ethnically homogenous state by claiming a certain imaginary territory. Racial nationalism. This ideology defines national identity based on race, aiming to preserve racial purity through policies like banning interracial relationships and restricting immigration of other races. It often justifies these actions by promoting eugenics, which is a controversial belief that attempts to improve the genetic quality of a population by controlling who can reproduce. It also advocates for political and legislative measures grounded in racial or eugenic theories. Subscribe to not miss out on new stuff and go watch my video on every type of fascism now to learn the distinction.